Hello and welcome back to this series of uh, instructional videos which I hope are useful for teachers and teaching assistants in primary and middle schools. Um, this particular video is different to the others in the series in that I'm, uh, despite the title I'm not going to show you how to make something. I'm going to talk about a component that I use a lot um, in my projects and that's, and that's the gear, gears. Uh, I have had teachers occasionally ask me to uh, give them some advice on how to teach uh, gears. Um, there are uh, resources available on the internet, uh, but many of them are not really appropriate for uh, younger children. So I hope that uh, um, my contribution is of some use. Um, there are lots of different kinds of gear. Um, these are some of them. Um, these, this is called a, a spur gear. I know in primary schools we often call these cogs. Um, I don't think it's a word that engineers use, but anyway. Um, I, I call them gears or gear wheels. And this particular gear is called a spur gear because um, perhaps it looks like the spurs that cowboys had on their boots. Um, it's a wheel with teeth around the outside and um, you use them in conjunction with another gear, uh, the teeth lock, uh, lock against each other, that's called meshing, gear meshing, and when one gear turns, it, it turns the other gear. There's lots of different kinds of um, uh, spur gears, different sizes. When you're using them, obviously make sure you're using different gears from the same set, otherwise they won't actually mesh with each other. Um, this is called a, a worm gear. It's like um, a single tooth that's been like a spiral around a cylinder. And uh, it's used to um, reduce the speed. It's particularly useful when we're using these uh, electric motors, which as you probably know, spin really, really fast. And we, we often want to slow them down and also get more force out of the motor. I'll be talking about more about that later on. Um, we use a, an adapter. Um, can you see they come with a 4mm hole? And I've pushed an adapter in to turn the hole into a 2mm hole. And then we can push the worm gear onto the motor. By the way, all, nearly all of the things I'm showing you are available from my, sh from my shop. And uh, I can show you an example here in this um, gear driven uh, buggy and you see the motor with its worm gear and that's meshing with a spur gear. If I turn it by hand can you see the spur gear turning round and if I switch it on you can see that the worm gear is just a blur it's turning so fast that the spur gear well it's going, still going fast but it's, it's slowed down a lot and so it's going at a more sensible speed, but more importantly, this axle now is turning with more power, with more force, with more torque. Um, these gears here are called bevel gears. You always use them as a pair. Um, and uh, you use them when you want to turn um, rotary movement through a right angle. So if you want to turn something that way, and then you want the output to be that way, you would use bevel gears. As you can see, they have gear, the teeth are at a 45 degree angle, so you'd use them like that. Um, I'll show an example here. Um, so we've got a hand powered mechanism here. You could perhaps use these for making uh, a roundabout. And I don't know if you can see, because they're the same size, um, the output is turning at the same speed as the input and then working over your direction and it'll also work that way as well. And the final type of gear that I've come across working in schools is called a rack and pinion gear. This is the rack. You can, if you can imagine a gear that's been cut open and unwrapped and laid out flat, we've got all the teeth there and then that connects with a, a small spur gear, we, we call it a pinion. And what it does is it's turning rotary movement 
into linear movement, into to and fro movement. It also works in two directions. I've made up a slightly better model here to show you. So can you see that I can control that strip by turning the pinion gear. It does work in the other direction as well. Um, I think I believe, I think I've seen um, some hand tools which, which use this principle to create a rotary movement. Um, another um, example where it's used is in car steering, st um, steering mechanisms. So this would be the steering wheel and then uh, each wheel would be fixed by linkages onto each end so that you could make the wheel steer with, this, with the steering wheel. Um, you may have heard of rack and pinion steering. Uh, another application is uh, on mountains, steep mountains. If you want to build a railway up there, then to stop the trains from sliding down the rails, you, you put um, a rack between the rails and um, a pinion gear underneath the train, which grips the teeth, which stops it from sliding down the track. They're, they're called rack railways. I, I believe there's one that goes up um, Mount Snowdon in Wales. So there are some of the gears that I've used. Let's go back to the basic spur gears. Um, I'm using these, so these are, believe it or not, I used in the early years in nursery and reception. They're just play, play gears. They come with their own base plates and axles, which I haven't got. I've just got the gears. So I've just made some axles with some bits of wood stuck onto a bit of corex. So um, at its most basic, um, with a gear you can, if you've got some movement in one location, you can make something move somewhere else. So by turning this gear, I can make um, the other gear turn. Uh, let's just stick a handle in here. I'm going to use hand power. You could of course connect this to, to a motor. Um, if you notice that the direction is reversed, so if I turn this gear clockwise, the other gear turns anti-clockwise. bit of terminology, uh, I'll refer to this as the drive gear and this as the driven gear. So the drive gear is the gear that's got the handle or the electric motor or whatever power system turning it and then the gears that are driven by it are called the driven gears. Um, because they're the same size, um, this is turning at the same speed as the driven gear. So one revolution of a driven gear, drive gear, beg your pardon, produces one revolution of the driven gear. Um, if you want to get the same direction out from the driven gear, you can add a third gear in the middle. Uh, it doesn't really matter what size it is, but uh, it tends to be smaller uh, to save space, and it's called the idler gear. And now when I turn the drive gear can you see that the driven gear is turning in the same direction? Still turning though at the same speed. Uh, when you start having lots of gears like this, it's called a gear train. I've got a gear train here. So that you can create multiple movement from one input. And uh, lots of machines do actually use gear, gear trains like this. Um, but life becomes more interesting when you use different size gears joined to each other. Now here I've got a large gear and a smaller gear and when I turn the large gear can you see that the driven gear is spinning faster these are a bit frustrating these gears because the number of teeth aren't numbers which divide easily. I think this is six teeth and this is ten teeth. And we've got another one here which is fourteen teeth so that makes the maths difficult. But the, the difference in speed depends on the diameter of the uh, spur gear or the number of teeth. You can use either. You can either count the teeth or you can measure the diameter. And this driven gear is turning nearly twice as fast. Not quite, but nearly twice as fast. When you go from a large gear to a small gear, the small gear turns faster, spins faster. Now if I turn this around, you can guess what's coming, I'm sure. 
if I turn the small gear now, the large gear is turning more slowly, spinning more slowly. So small to big slows things down. Uh, this is a principle that I use a lot in the toys and models that I make because I nearly always want these to try to slow these motors down. Uh, here's an example here. Um, this is a motor that you can buy that's already fitted to some gears. When you have lots of gears together like this, it's called a gearbox. And if I just connect it up, can you see the, the gears spinning round? You might just be able to see there is a small gear on the motor to a large gear, small gear, large gear, small gear, large gear, small gear, large gear. And we're getting a really, really nice slow movement out. Uh, with this particular uh, make of gearbox, you can actually uh, uh, dismantle it and replace some of the gears with spacers. And the more gears you take out, the, the faster the output will be. So that's quite difficult to see what's going on there. So I've made a, a larger version here. So we've got our standard motor that we use for most things in primary schools and middle schools. It spins ever so fast. Um, if I switch it on, you can see that the gear on it is just a blur. But um, you can see that as we go along, the speed is going more and more, more and more reducing. Um, Unlike here where we just had the gears spinning around a fixed axle, it's more usual to have the gear actually fixed to an axle. So that so both when the gear turns it spins the axle. And that's what we've got here with, with the gearbox. And it allows us to put another gear on the same axle. So can you see that we've gone from small to big, which will turn this axle more slowly than this gear, but it itself has got its own small gear which is connected to another large gear and so on and so on so we've got small to big, small to big, small to big, small to big, small to big and we're reducing the speed as, as we go along but there's something else that you gain okay you could say we've sacrificed speed but we've gained something each time you go from small to big the larger gear is turning more forcefully. You're increasing the force, the turning power. The technical word is torque. And I can demonstrate this really um, clearly with this model. Can you see, by the way, um, I do know this is safe. These are plastic gears. They're not going to hurt my finger. I can stop it easily with one finger because this small motor doesn't have uh, much torque, it's, no, it doesn't have a lot of force, it, it's just a small toy motor. And I can also stop this axle from turning by just pinching it with my fingers. Uh, oh, I think this one's a little bit harder but I can still turn it, I can definitely feel it's turning more powerfully. Now what about this one? Definitely having to work harder here. I think I may even have to you two just, just about managed to stop that turning. Now this one I think I'm going to have trouble. I promise you I'm not, I'm not acting. It really is genuine. I can almost feel it coming to a point where the axle is probably going to snap. That's turning with an incredible amount of turning power and a lot of force. Another way of looking at this Imagine you had string wrapped around here that was lifting a weight from the ground. You'd probably be able to lift a few hundred grams with that axle. But once we get down to here and here, you could probably lift up uh, several kilos. Still, originally you, from this very small, uh, uh, not very powerful motor. So that's the magic of gears really, um, by using them in combinations. Uh, you can make machines and um, mechanisms to do things beyond our strength. Um, just returning back to the other types of gear, 
Uh, do you remember the worm gear? Uh, we've got a worm gear here. A worm gear is extremely useful because you can get quite a big speed reduction just with two gears. Do you remember how much work we had to do with the spur gears to get a decent speed reduction? Uh, we've just got one worm gear and a spur gear and you get a reasonable speed reduction out of that. Um, here's an example of a bought gearbox with a worm gear. It's quite small. Can you see the worm gear there? Okay. Um, the uh, bevel gears, I think we saw. Um, I would use this perhaps to, to make a carousel or um, a roundabout. Um, here's an example of um, spur gears where I've used them not to increase force but to increase the speed because I wasn't able to turn this motor which I'm using as a dynamo fast enough by hand but by going big to small, big to small I can get enough speed to actually make these LEDs light. So um, I hope you found this simple beginner's guide to gears um, uh, of some use and uh, I hope you get a chance to perhaps build something that uses gears. Thanks for watching.